Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here. Today I have an exciting match for you. This is going to be looking forward into the future of Yu-Gi-Oh, specifically at the Kashira archetype and where that deck is going to be going. Um, since we do not have any new things happening in Yu-Gi-Oh right now, and I'm not going to be going into any major events, I don't think, until that time, um, I figure I'm going to start looking forward into the future of things so I can see how my deck squares up against the new best deck that's coming out of the next set which appears to be Kashira. Now, I have read these cards before this match, but this is my first time actually playing against it at full power, so I think you guys should be very... It, it should enjoy seeing what a current deck right now that I am doing well with, how it holds up against that deck specifically. Um, it's actually really interesting. I thought this would be a way, like, a very bad matchup for how the Runic cards interact with the Kashira cards, banishing their cards, but uh, you might be surprised of how the result of this match goes. But before we get into the actual match, I just wanted to let you guys a reminder that I am doing a giveaway currently for 10 OTS 19 packs. Um, all you have to do is subscribe and comment on my YCS Topping Deck profile uh, video, and that is it. Then you are entered. If at 1,000 subscribers, I'll be giving those away to one person, so just so it gives a heads up for that. So now, without further ado, let's jump into the match. Okay, guys, so here we go. This is the match. It is going to be my Neteria Runic deck that I've been playing for the Zodiac Tournament um, against the Kashira deck full power post the next set, which I believe is Photon Hypernova. Um, so they have all of their support. Um, so yeah, like I said, this deck is still, mo it's like pretty much pretty close to the same list. I just cut it down to 40. Um, I took out one triptic Triple Tactics Talents and one Fountain, so I'm down to one Fountain and two Talents now. But this deck is still geared for tier. Um, this was still just mainly four tier, so um, going into Kashira very much changes how the game plan has to work. But how the decks interact is very interesting. As I mentioned before, banishing off the Kashira, the Kashira deck with the runic cards really infringes of how the um, the game plan works because you kind of could accidentally give them free advantage or make cards for them live, like for instance, birth live on accident by by banishing their cards. So when I activate Runic Tip here, um, obviously I banish top card of your deck and I hit Gamma. Unfortunately, like thank God, like I'm, I'm I'm not trying to hit Fenrir's Unicorns, uh, the spell. Those are all the cards that uh, can do stuff when they are banished. So it's very important to keep in mind that when you're playing against this deck, you only really want to use the Runics to banish if you are in a like desperate situation. So I'm gonna fast this board now a little bit just so we can get you know like the, this is like pretty much the same Runic. Uh, Materia type of place that we always do. Here we just had the extra blessing, or I'm sorry, we had the extra runic card, so we were able to uh, do Coral Dragon to go in the Baron, get the extra draw. So this is pretty good. We have the Chameleon, the Graveyard, a Medora in the Graveyard as well. Two runics in hand and a Bestial. Um, yeah, we're looking pretty good here. This is all pretty good. So he activates the Field Spell. Again, this is the same interaction with the... Uh, the tier one field spell, you can only activate one of this card per turn. So if you chain destruction on the field spell, it just immediately fizzles it. Uh, well, not fizzles it, but you know what I mean. Like, it doesn't resolve properly, and they can't activate another one for the turn. So it's really, really good. This card is very, very good. Like, obviously, like I said, I've read these cards before, but I never played with them. I played against them fully, so. We destruction, banish top four. This is where things start getting scary when, you know, we start banishing Kashira cards, because now he has something like Birth Alive. The trap does do something when it's banished, but he has to have a uh, an Exceed Monster, if I remember right. So yeah, he should be able to keep blowing. We can activate Fountain here. I choose to do it here and not wait for the next one. I didn't want to be too greedy because if something happens to Fountain, I didn't want to like waste it. Something to keep in note for this deck. Um, so currently right now in the format where we have um, we have Tier Element and Flunder and Sprite and decks like those running around. But we also have Sprite Elf that is protecting a lot of things in the Sprite deck. Uh, runic Flashing Fire is actually, in my opinion, the worst Runic card that there is currently, because you don't want to pop anything against Tear. You do not, you cannot pop anything against uh, Flunder, and Sprite usually protects most of their monsters anyway with Elf. So Flashing Fire actually ends up being one of the weakest ones as long as your opponent is playing properly. Um, one of the benefits of this card is that you can do, you can activate uh, Flashing Fire not in the main phase, like in the draw phase or standby phase, to be able to pop Elf before it's able to revive something on your own turn. So it, it, it's not, like, it's still good, but it's definitely one of the weaker ones. I would say the best one right now currently is Freezing Curses, just because it can negate Kekalos, and that's, like, the biggest thing, as well as it can negate Robina and Barrier Statue and things of that nature. So, yeah. So he continues to play, uses Pot of Prosperity. I was thinking about negating it, but I chose not to. Um, he adds the new Kashira spell card. That thing is disgusting. It's just a free special summon. I question why there's a Mushroom Man in his deck. 
So if he special summons immediately, we flashing fire it. And this is what I was getting to. This is a deck where I think that flashing fire really shines because they are special summoning and you can just pop them before they even use their effects. So you might be able to cut them out of a, of a play line just by popping their monster immediately. Again, we banish more cards. Luckily, we're not hitting anything too crazy. Summons the tier limit. I'm reading these cards as we're going, just so I like we're making sure we're playing properly. So here it puts them in a pretty good situation where I have all my Natarias out now. I have extra Runics in the graveyard, um, two Shufflers, but the Shufflers don't do anything against this deck, unfortunately. Um, thank God he didn't open up Dimensional Shifter, and now he's able to use the spell on the uh, the tier elements, the tier element uh, Kashira. And this is what I was talking about. Birth was live. Like he could have used Birth before with the Rise Heart, but uh, he couldn't. Well, not that he couldn't, he chose not to, but it was live that he could do it. Luckily, Rise Heart's not a crazy one. Thank God this was not something like Fenrir. Play so attacks over Minotaria monsters. This isn't a big deal. We still have a very good, um, we, have, we have a pretty good, like, setup going on here. That that spell card can't be used this turn. He goes in the Shangri-La. We're able to bring back Mole Cricket. Summons out Rise Heart. Banish the Fenrir. Blocks the zone. No big deal. And then goes into the new uh, Xyz. So this card is obviously a, um, a Macrocosmos on legs. This is a very, very strong card. And probably the reason this deck is going to be good for a long time. Um, but yeah, we are... But the problem is now that... So he has this. But we are we have already played on our turn one. And we are so far ahead. That it doesn't even matter that he has the walking macro at this point. Because we are leagues ahead. So in the, uh, and in the standby phase, you have to remember he can use this to special summon. So I need to play this fairly well. Um, so we had to figure out like how all this was going to work. So in standby phase, because I'm turn player, I can choose to activate my effect first. So we bring up the sunflower. Sunflower is very good because it can counter certain things. And then during on the res, we activate the uh, freezing curses. We can use our fountain now. The freezing curses get banished, but we do still have it in grave. Um, so yeah, this is mandatory. I didn't know that, so he was able to equip. But it doesn't matter. So we choose not to use the fountain because I didn't know this was mandatory. So we change the chain. So his would be chain link one at the resolution, and then I'm gonna chain link two sunflower. I could not use the camellia mill because camellia specifically says it has to go to graveyard. And while this is on the field, I can't do that. So this is negated. This is negated and destroyed. And now we can go into the graveyard again. So in a very like commanding position. So now we can just summon a bestial, and then just synchro back off. We also give ourselves more uh, more stuff to. Like resources again. This is where the shuffle force come in handy to put back materials. Go back in the Baron, use the Druid Swarm to send away the Shangri La, and then pop the Birth. And then we already know he has a spell in hand, so we're pretty like confident of what we are at this point. Now we're just very ahead, and like we said, we didn't use Fountain earlier, so now we can Fountain. And again, now we're just so far ahead that it doesn't even matter. And because we know he has the spell in hand, we can go Nat Beast, immediately turn off the spell, bring back Cricket. Now we're just putting pressure on and getting extra monsters just for the sake of it. And yeah, that was the game. Okay, moving on to game two. So he actually does something very interesting here. He actually makes me go first. I was expecting him to be going first, so I put an evenly match. But he chose me to go first, because, um, yeah, I was expecting it. So I thought he was going to go first and try to set up the walking macrocosmos against me. And then, um, yeah, just sit on that and try to beat me from there. That gains a lot of free advantage turn one. So yeah. Well, he let us go first, so we're able to start popping off a little bit. Um, and later in this turn, we're able to see... So he sides something in my Lava Golem, which is very scary. Um, this card is terrifying for me because it outs literally everything, and we can't really... There's no counterplay to it. But because I know he's playing Kashtira, we decided to go into a uh, Naturia Beast line. And the reason we do this is because they have the Field Spell now. They have Birth, uh, Triple Tactics Talent, the other Tactics Talent that's coming out in the next set as well. And then they have... Um, What's it called? They have uh, their other... They have, there's like three Kashtira spells that are all very, very good. Um, and seven, Sacred Sword of the Seven Stars, Pot Cards. Like, the, the, the Naturia Beast is a card that shines against Kashtira as long as you can protect it from Special Summon Monster. That is the biggest thing. So, we we remember the Mole Cricket and then pass. So, he activates a spell. I use Naturia Beast. At first, I thought he just forgot what Beast did, but it turns out he actually did this on purpose. Because now he's able to go Lava Golem, Tribute out the Beast, and the Mole Cricket to stop me from doing anything later. Then he, that makes Triple Tactics Talon Slive because I activated Beast in the main phase. He shuffles away my card. And he adds Rise Heart. Special Summon Unicorn. On the Summon, I'm using Slumber on my Lava Golem. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to draw into something like Flashing Fire or Tip so that we can just pop the Unicorn and not have to worry about it. That would have been the best draw here. 
And again, very scary. We're banishing Kashira cards. And this is where I see the triple tactics taxing. Very good card. Also coming out next set. So we shuffle three back. We're looking for a tip or flashing fire, but we find freezing curses instead. I decided to negate it because I didn't want to give him access to the other spell. Because um, that spell's really good. Or the uh, the birth. I would have prevent that if I could. So he special summons the rise heart, banishes the spell, uses the spell to get back the birth. This card is so good. Uh, this, like it's so ridiculous how the how this deck comes together so well. So he special summons the the dark arm dragon uh, rank seven, which is a non once per turn destruction. This is something I was I didn't see coming, but yeah, very like very good. I didn't I did not see that coming at all. So when he pops the second time, I was like, oh god, I didn't know he could do that. Uh, then he has the Tiromans Kashira. So he did have extenders. His whole hand was live. But we still have Lava Golem, of course. Um, so he's able to go back into the Shangri-La. On the summon, we summon the Mole Cricket. On the summon of Mole Cricket, we bring out Camellia. Camellia effect up tree, get Blessing. Like, the rotation of the Naturi is just what keeps this deck so good. Um, so yeah, now we have Shangri-La. And then uh, from here, during the standby phase, he uses the effect, the special summon Fenrir. On the summon of Fenrir, we can bring back Camellia, and then Camellia effect the Sun again. Uses Fenrir, banishes one of my Camellias, that's fine. Tree, dump Mole Cricket. Or dump tree to get Mole Cricket. And then he, of course, because I P banished a card, blocks his own. So I summon Mole Cricket, summon Sunflower. We can use those two to go on the Coral Dragon. You have to remember he already used the Fenrir this turn to banish my Camellia, so I'm free to pretty much just go off from here. Um Coral Dragon to pop the birth. This is like continuous value of a card that is like insane. So like if this is on the field, you want to get rid of it as fast as possible. And birth also naturally counters runics on your turn because of the other effect where if a spell card or an effect is activated while you control a Kashira, you can target three cards your opponent's graveyard and banish them face down. So if it's your turn and you activate a runic card, at the resolution of the runic, you will go activate Fountain as channeling one, make your targets, and then they can go activate the Spirth as channeling two and target the same three that you did and then banish them and you don't draw anything. It is insane. So um, yeah, it's very rough. Just something to keep in mind. But we were able to go Swamber for Jerry. Get back the Fallon that he destroyed, and then go back into the Sword Soul. And we, we're using Sword Soul here because we need to out the Shangri La. We do not have a an out for this right now. Talents is not live because you didn't use anything in the main phase, so we need to be able to out this. And this card protects itself from uh, destruction. Um, so yeah, we draw with Coral Dragon. And again, this is this is kind of the the reason why I like this deck so much. You 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 like while we're playing, we are gaining so much value over time. Things recur so easily, and if they don't stop the recursion and the constant value gaining as you're playing. Um, it really gets out of hand super, super fast if they don't end the game. And this, we, he did not have an opportunity to end the game fast enough to where we, like, even with dead cards in our hand, like the evenly matches and the, uh, the triple tactics talents, it doesn't even matter. We're just so far ahead in advantage that we can, we have, like, just be, even though he sided very well and got me with the going first, uh, rather than going second, um, it didn't even matter because of how far we are. So we banished those just to be able to, uh, now we can trigger Fountain, of course, because, you know, Runix trigger the, uh, the sword soul because that's fair and then look how many cards we have just compare it it's so it's so ridiculous and then we can blessing back the nat beast and then that's that's just game that that's just so much there's no way you can do here he also can't um he can't summon any cashiers from the hand because he has a monster on the field if he attacks we can slumber it so it can't attack to lock him into that if and then he usually needs a spell to be able to keep going unless he has the uh this card in his hand but he did not obviously and then even if he does we can just banish it with the uh, the, Chi the Chen Yang, or destroy it with the Flashing Fire. Um, so yeah, this deck is, like, crazy. So, like, obviously, like I said, there were some interactions that needed to be mentioned for the Kashiras with this deck. Um, like, Runix in the Kashira is obviously not very good, but the Naturias make it very... I don't want to say even, but it does like, make it a level playing field a little bit. As long as you're not unlucky with the banishes and hitting the spell so they can get back free value. Um, unfortunately, you're going to hit Unicorns and Fenrirs to make Birth live, but, you know, it's just, like, a price you have to be willing to pay. You just need to, you know, manage your resources right and play well, and then hopefully you'll be able to come out on top. Um, the Terrier Beast being very good in this matchup as well, as long as you don't get D-Shifted. So, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the match. Just something to remember, and this is something educational for the deck. Um, I do have another game against the uh, against uh, the Tyrolman deck that I had a really good one against in a tournament uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, it was just a game one, but it was like an insane game one that I uh, got very, very... Like, I played out of my mind to be able to win it, so I might upload that one too. I'm not sure yet, but this is just something I wanted to show off that happened to me recently that I thought was pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and to the future formats that are coming with post-photon hypernova, and um, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.